And I'm Heather Branch here with Mike asking for his insight on what you can be doing now to better prepare for your financial future as you get closer to retirement. Got to have that financial plan in place. And Mike Douglas, certified financial planner, a.k.a. Michigan's retirement coach, here to help you do just that. Get that plan. Find us anytime, michigansretirementcoach.com. We also have links posted in the show notes. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, just search Michigan's Retirement Coach there. And that is how you can subscribe to get all the information, see all the things. We've got lots of thoughts. I like how you said YouTube. You said YouTube channel. That was great. There's so much inf- inflection and emphasis. You I was said, so also follow us on YouTube. our YouTube channel. That was YouTube. great. I would follow just based on that recommendation alone. I'd say that's wonderful. Let's do that. Uh, that was so funny. Lots of, lots of things to lots, lots of things to look at on YouTube. Yeah, YouTube channel. That's good. Um, all right. Well, see, listen, I got to be energetic and exciting and, and peppy when we talk about things like market nuttiness. Oh, yeah. yeah. Womp, womp. <laughs> womp, womp. Especially right now. Sorry. So much volatility. So, so much, much volatility. chaos. It actually hasn't been. I feel like it got crazy. And then it seems to be settling. And listen, are you telling me know. the market is cyclical? <laughs> How are dare you, you? Are you telling me that it has downs? And, and that it's ups. unpredictable and that nobody really knows. I was about to say, I don't know. It's the market. Are you telling me right. that nobody really knows when it comes to market behavior right. and patterns? Are you tell me what? we all live in a giant simulation. What? FYI. A giant simulation. <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> slide that in. Don't Just go like there. Just like slide it as like a passive thing. Like right. in a giant simulation. So anyways, the markets are down. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Wait, what did he just say? Right. Rewind. Oh, man. It hits the back t- 15 seconds. Compliance button. is like, no. No. <laughs> you know we can't talk about the simulation. Uh, t- <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. This is what happens when uh, things get weird. We get a little loopy. Yeah. yeah. Um, Let's talk about this Market Watch article because, I mean, I don't, I, the, the points that were being made here, I'm kind of like, what? So, first of all, we're the problem. It's us. It's our fault. It's, everything's, everything's your fault, yeah, dear listener. The number one enemy of your 401k may be you. You. You, Italicized. It's you. you. How dare you? How dare you? So, this article talked about how everyday people are pushing more and more to the risk of the stock market because it's up. Yeah. But that's one sign the market could turn. First of all, my first problem with this article, that's, I mean, the market could turn at any point. Is there really any signs? Anyways, then it goes on to say, no matter your portfolio construction, 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30, whatever, the quote, superpower of these portfolios is their fixed proportions. So I want you to clarify what that means. Mm -hmm. And then also pointing out through our working years, the important part is the growth side, of course. Now we're getting to retirement and it becomes the protected side. So let's break these things down and stop yeah. accusing the hardworking men and women of America that are just trying to do what we've been told over and over again. It's and all now you. here we've, we've done the thing we were told. We saved, we worked, we saved, we have a big 401k and now it's our fault again that we're in this situation. Yeah. yeah, because we control the stock market and we control right. tax policy and we control, we inter- control government everything. spending. And we control all oh, these things that are changing the market daily. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think there's a couple of things that are really built into that that statement that came out that are some yeah. are some are very true. Um, you know, I had a mentor years ago who told me control what you can control and mitigate mm-hmm. the rest. And basically, what that means is there's a lot of stuff in life we can't control, mm-hmm. right? Like I can't control traffic; I can just control what time I leave. Um, and so, if you know that where you're driving has a lot of traffic, maybe consider leaving at a different time when there might mm-hmm. be less traffic, rather than driving into the same traffic every day and being mad at the traffic. Right. right? Like th- at some point, you're like, it's not them, it's me, and that's mm-hmm. kind of what we're talking about here. So the market mm-hmm. is going to be cyclical. The market's going to go through up times and down times. Yeah. Um, and when you're working, you don't really care so much. You just keep plugging away, keep throwing money in, keep participating, and that's the whole goal. But, uh, and, and in that, so it's interesting. Some people use what's called the rule of 100, 100 okay. minus your age should equal your risk ratio or your equity to fixed ratio. So for example, a hundred minus your age. So if you are 30 years old, um, the, and I think that there's some fall off in this ratio with younger folks, more so than with older folks, but, um, the rule would be a hundred minus your age. So if you're, if you're 50 years old, 
that would mean 50% should be in equities, 50 percent should be in fixed. Mm -hmm. If you're 70 years old, 100 minus your age equals your equity exposure. So if you're 70 years old, 100 minus 70 is 30. Mm -hmm. means 30% equities, 70% fixed. When you say fixed, um, is that it's bonds, CDs, bonds, annuities? CDs, annuities, yeah. Okay. All, and all, then, all these safe, safe okay. investments um, or safer investments. And sure. then the equities being your opportunity or your growth. And, you, it's, mm -hmm. and I, I like using the phrase opportunity rather than growth because it's an opportunity to grow, opportunity to fail, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what mm -hmm. really, it's opportunity money. Because um, whenever we say, well, this is my growth money, my, my equities. Well, some years uh, and, and most years, but other years it's your loss money. So we just right. have to be real, real about that. Um, right. And so to their point is if you can have your fixed portions, um, your proportions they, as they reference, you know, how much should be in there. And there's a lot of the back and forth. I think we tend to fall on a scale where, and most commentators agree that you should be in a range between 40, 60 to 60, 40 for the okay. most part. If you want to sell an article, one of the easiest ways is to title it the death of the 6040 portfolio. You'll see it all the time pop up because it's yeah. an easy way because people say, Oh, I got a 6040 portfolio because it's commonly used. Yeah. And so if you want to get a lot of clicks, you title it the death of the thing that everybody uses. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's and evil, that's what they've but been, okay. Writers have been doing it. And so they yeah. say, Why, What's the death? Well, because market trends could indicate this. But uh -huh. the reality is there's a ratio. And, um, yeah, I like what it talked about the start of this thing when it said that there's a lot of money running to the market, almost very 2007, um, you know, where the market was 2019, people sprinting to the market because it's doing so well that I have a fear that I'm missing out and that I'm not participating in the opportunities right, that are there. Right. And then when these days like, uh, well, like Monday, when there was a negative 3% day in the market, Mm -hmm. And it's so funny. I got an email from a client over the weekend saying, hey, I want to make sure we're participating in the in the growth, right? That was his whole thing. And he said, well, let's do a review and let's make sure I'm, you know, and he's, he's doing great in the market. It's a very tempered portfolio based on who they are. Mm -hmm. But he said, I want to participate in more of the gains. And then Monday comes and it's a negative 3% day in the market. And he sends me another email saying, actually, I think I'm okay. Right? <laughs> because he... Because, you know, when the market's good for two weeks, yeah. all we see is the green and it takes yeah. one day of pretty red to really recalibrate some things. To check and your think, temperament. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that the problem is we get really comfortable in a scenario, forgetting that there is this other side of the mountain, this other side of the world that mm -hmm. that is going to pop up at any time and rear its head. Mm -hmm. And we have to be comfortable with that. And so I think that understanding risk, understanding where we are, um, in having appropriate ratio. So again, how much should you have in fixed? Well, the biggest thing in our world is you want fixed to be productive, right? We just don't want fixed to be ineffective or on the sideline because technically cash is fixed, right? Meaning you can't lose. Um, and so it's a zero risk proposition unless inflation happens to get high. Right. I was going to say not lately with cash. Because right. So, and that's the funny part. That's for a long so people say, I'll keep it in cash. I say, great. Well, now you're losing four, five, 6% a year. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what we want to be very careful of. And so for us, that's most importantly that fixed is productive and okay. equity is opportunity. And okay. as long as we understand that opportunity for up and for down, it helps us have a better understanding and hopefully a better temperance during mm -hmm. the storms, mm -hmm. because we want to be, uh, we want to be solid footed in our plan before yep. the storms ever come, we always say we don't make, you know, really strategic, intentional decisions from the couch, not from the foxhole. And so that's what we do. We go through and we build out an understanding of risk. Um, and, and everybody uses different tools. For us, we build uh, pretty comprehensive risk portfolios. Mm -hmm. where we cover your risk capacity, your risk tolerance and your risk requirement. And we go through and say, how much risk do you want in your portfolio? Uh, that's your tolerance. And some people say, I don't want any risk. And then we run the numbers and say, well, actually you need to have a little more aggressive portfolio to accomplish your income goals. Okay. Um, then we look at your risk capacity, which is not about you, but it's about your portfolio. How much can it stomach losing before it becomes unrecoverable? Mm -hmm. And so there's a certain threshold where you can say, well, I'm comfortable with a lot of risk because I've always come back. But the numbers would say, if you lose more than 32%, you'll never recover back because you're withdrawing too much. And so there's a risk uh, limitation there. So risk tolerance is you, risk capacity is your portfolio, risk requirement is your income. What is the lowest rate of return you can get and still have everything you need the rest of your life? So some people come in and they say, well, I don't want any risk. And then again, we go through and say, well, if we don't get a six or 7% return, you're going to run out of money because of how much you're withdrawing. 
or other people come in and say, I'm very aggressive and I want to be, I want to be out there in the market. We say, that's great. And then we run the numbers and say, you could live off a 1% return the rest of your life and still be okay. So now if you choose to be risky, that's fine. It's just by choice, not by force. So that is one of the most important things in this is to understand the difference. And when you're figuring out these proportions, because there's going to be these rules, right? Rule of 100 or the 60-40 rule. Everybody's got the a rule. Sense? There's so Everybody's many rule. rules and also which rule is right. Right. And it, it, it doesn't, and the, and the rule that's right is the one that, it, it's, I always say it like software or um, laundry systems, right? Right. We all have a system of laundry in our house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, of how it's supposed to go. Yeah. And the right laundry system is the one that works, that you'll want to cleans your clothes the way you want it to. Right. So like we have four kids and Kimberly came up with this idea that we are going to have a clean bin and a dirty bin for each kid. That way they take their dirty clothes down, they wash them, and then they will always know which clothes they have in the room that are clean or dirty. And she goes, what do you think? I said, I don't care. I just want them to do laundry. <laughs> right. And then, then all of a sudden I, I come back home and I have... Do you have a cleaner? In my closet, a clean and a dirty bin. And I said, Kimberly Douglas for the win. (laughs) And I said, I don't care as long as the laundry gets done. So the system that works is the one that makes sense for you and that you'll actually do. Uh, Right. And and when uh it comes to portfolio ratios, it's the same thing. What is the one that makes the most sense for you? Can you stomach a 3% negative Monday? Can you handle it and not freak out? I'm not saying freak out in a negative way, but can you handle it? Not freak out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you say you want to be part of the gains, you have to also be part of the losses, not entirely, but to a certain extent. On the other hand, if you say, I don't care if I ever make money, I just don't want to lose it. Okay. Can you, can you handle sitting on the sideline while the market just goes bananas? Because that's what you're choosing and that's okay. It has no, it's not wrong as long as it makes sense for you and your family. And that's where understanding at a deeper level who you are, and I always joke with this client that I always say he's the definition of moderately conservative because when the market's okay. up, he wants to make all the money. When the yeah. market's down, he doesn't want to lose any money. Right. So he's a moderate when the market's good and an ultra conservative when the market's bad. And, he's all um, of us, AKA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's everybody, right? And we just yeah. need that crystal ball that tells us the day <laughs> to get in, the day to get out. Um, and, and that's where we, but that's not a, that's not a, a reproducible, not scalable strategy for your retirement right? Mm -hmm. We Mm want to be the fastest tortoise a lot of times, not the hare. Now, some people come in and they have hairish tendencies, but when it gets crazy, they're not the hare. They're a tortoise. Mm -hmm. And that's Mm -hmm. okay because at this phase of life, you're living it out. You're loving it. You're driving, you're, you're golfing, you're traveling, you're doing all these things and a down market shouldn't change that. And that is perfectly acceptable, but you have to have these comprehensive conversations about risk to really be, be comfortable because now when people come back in and as we sit down and review their plans, we say, let's go back to your risk portfolio yeah. first. We agreed that this was an acceptable range of opportunity and also an acceptable range of safety. Did we fall within that? Was it a successful year? Because if the market goes up 26% and you're up 15 and you say, gosh, I missed out on some of that. And then the market drops 20% and you're down six that is when we start seeing the rubber really meet the road. And you don't have to look back very far. Yeah. We have 2018 was negative. 2020 had the fastest 30% crash in history, followed by a major recovery and finished up. 2021, positive 26%. 2022, negative 20%. And 2023, positive 25%. Like it's a lot of ups and downs. Yeah. And yeah. And to have a non-risk, non-risk appropriate portfolio. Yeah. If you're strictly look at, looking at rates of returns, you'll go crazy. Yeah. But if you can actually understand why you're getting your returns, that's one of the biggest frustrations is I don't understand why this Gotta is happening the to why. my money. Got to understand right? the like, why. Mm-hmm. I, I've saved this money and yet someone else is doing something and it doesn't make sense. If yep. we can clarify that with some good conversation, good questions, that's one of the most important things is to understand who you are. Um, on our website, uh, michigansretirementcoach.com, there's a button that says start your retirement roadmap. If you click on that button, we will have this conversation to start understanding who you are. We'll reach out. We'll get a time for us to have coffee to understand your risk requirement, capacity, and tolerance. Understand your life goals of where you want to go, what you want to do, who you want to do it with, and how you want to travel, how you want to do your things. Map out your income, understanding your risk uh, portfolio, understanding all the things that go into it. Because at the end of the day, 
when you're golfing, you shouldn't be checking the market. When you're snowboarding, you shouldn't be checking the market. You should be doing what makes the most sense for you and protecting your assets the best way you can, which is with knowledge and comfort. And that's how you build a successful retirement plan. So again, Michigan's Retirement Coach, click the button that says start your retirement roadmap today. And we'll have that conversation to understand more about you and help make sure you're protected the right way. We also have links posted in the show notes. If it's more convenient, you can just click there to go to our website, which is again, michigansretirementcoach.com.